The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. This episode of Hands On is brought to you by Ceres de Sal Football Club. All right, welcome everybody to the show. It's the second episode of Hands On. We're very excited to bring this to you. We have a very special guest with us today. But before we get into you know, introducing officially the man next to me, we'd like to thank each and every one of you who actually came out and viewed the first episode of Hands On. Over 28,000 people came out to, to, to see the, the pilot episode. We're completely blown away by that. Thank you so much. For, for watching, for both Coach Hans and myself, we're, we're, we're very pleased that you guys have come out and, and seen the pilot episode. All right, so if you guys watched the first episode, you would be familiar with uh, the, the sound that was being made. <laughs> that was uh, Coach Hans' um, necklaces. Was, we had two options. No more ping pong. <laughs> we had two options. One was to try to get Coach Hans to take off the necklaces. Turns out that's impossible. No that's worry. impossible. No, he doesn't take it off for anybody. So this time around, we have a special microphone that we've set up for Coach Hans so that we don't encounter the same problem anymore. All right. So the man sitting next to us, if you guys are not familiar, which is highly unlikely, uh, the man next to us is the man that is, I don't know, single-handedly probably breathed life back into Philippine football, Sir Dan Palami. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. You actually don't need a guest. I've seen uh, how you handled the first episode, and uh, it was quite a uh, very interesting one. And <laughs> Thank you. I hope uh, we could uh, at least uh, get something interesting going on later. Oh, for sure. You know, we, guys, before we even throw up the first question, number one, first I'll let you know, we don't follow a script here, all right? It's like we're in the canto of Sari Sari Store, we're in Thailand here. The reason why Dan is our first official guest is it's only just right that he has to be the first guest here since Dan knows this, I call him the, the man, Dan the man, and I don't know if it's right, but I call him the Renaissance man because everything that all of you are watching now in local football, Ascos and all that, this is the guy who, who started it all. Of course, yeah, with the PFF, the Philippine Football, uh, Philippine football Federation, but I think the Fo Philippine Football Federation uh, saw something with Dan wherein you know, they work like, like a partnership, I would say, where, you know, Dan put his foot forward and, and, and like they say, the rest is history. You know, everything is, I'm not putting Dan on a pedestal, wala akong utang sa kanya, at wala siyang utang sa akin, wala akong sinisingil dito. You know, uh, hindi to mutual, ano, mutual fans club. No, but it's just right that Dan should be our first guest. Absolutely. And I don't think, uh, an hour and a half will be enough to touch all that Dan has uh, achieved, you know. And uh, first thing I think what I want to throw to Dan is, how did it all come about? I mean, mm. first of all, where did you come from? I, I know where you came from, but for the public, where you came from and uh, where you played. And then how did this, all this thing with the Ascals come in? How did you start off getting <laughs> Phil and James? I don't know if they were the first ones. I think there was somebody else before yeah. Phil and James and all that. You got a floor, guy. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of uh, worried what you would be saying, but no, thank you for the compliment. No, uh, well, I'm a provinciano. I come from Leyte, Tacloban City. I uh, started playing football when I was nine and uh, really enjoyed it because I didn't have the height, as you can see. <laughs> <That obvious>. And, <clears throat> <obvious. clears throat> and uh, when I got to, uh, when I got hold of the football, I was in the track and field mm. team, so I was kind of fast, so nobody could catch me. So I said, this is a sport I could excel in. <laughs> so <clears throat> I, that's what I did. Played football, enjoyed it, until college, uh, varsity in UP. And then, but later, wasn't part of the later, wasn't part of the Philippine Football Federation then. Mm. We only came in 2010. Yeah, yes. I so we all watched the newspapers about uh, Go Go for Goal and all these tournaments, and uh, we only got Betamax tapes for 
Dat is wat ik hoor. I'm really sorry, ja. Ja, wel. Dat is het zeggen wat hoog is, hè? Go ahead, go ahead. Ja, en dan. Of course, the, the only games we watched was Escape to Victory. <laughs> oh, right, uh, okay. And then we had the tapes of Pelé before. And mm-hmm. So that's, that's, that was how it started. But uh, graduated from college, I had my own company. And then we said, hey, hey, why don't we start playing football again? So we started playing football at the back of City Hall in Quezon City. That's the Laos. Yeah, that's the Laos. Mm-hmm. So my drivers and my staff, everybody was there. My drivers acted as goalkeepers, so we, we were just playing. No choice, huh? Yeah, yeah no choice. They had, to, they had to come with me. And then he said, hey, there are guys playing in Sunken Garden in UP. Mm. Why don't we go there? Okay. So we played there. Of course, uh, other teams were there, and they started uh, beating us, even with the ladies around. <laughs> and then finally he said, hey, let's get serious now. Okay. So we, we got in players from Tacloban, from um, uh, Visayas. Taught them how to do rails. Mm. So when they came to the company, they didn't know anything. Or they just played football. But I, t- I said, you know, this is not a career. So we teach you how to do the rails, and and then you join the club. So you're excused from your duties mm-hmm. when we have tournaments and when we have practices. Then that's how it all began. So way back in 2009, f- uh, November, PFF called me. Uh, Aris and uh, Mari Martinez, uh-huh. uh, God bless his soul. Uh, they called me to say, hey, would you like to handle the under-19 national team? And for me, it was like, whoa. No, uh, well, that's what I'm, um, I'm, I'm wondering about. How did they get a hold of you? I mean, how did they know you were Dan Palami and what were you doing? I was, up to? yeah. Then what did they see or what did they hear that they asked you to I was, take care of a national team? I was already, team? I mean, Laos had already been making Waves, waves in mm. Ang Liga. Yes. We were in the final. So Aris, being the technical director in PFF, knew about the team and he knew how more professional we were. I mean, it mm-hmm. wasn't really professional mm-hmm. than the other teams. Yeah. So I think he got in touch with Mary for Mary to get in touch with me. So we had lunch and they said, hey, we'd like to offer you the national team under 19. Mm-hmm. They have a tournament in China, uh, AFC. Mm-hmm. I said, hey, I'd be happy to handle the team. So. How do we get the players? We do tryouts. Oh, oh no, we have the players already. <coughs> okay. Uh, the coaches. Oh, we have the coaches already. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what do you exactly want me to do? Uh, you know, they still have to fly out to China, so we need somebody to take care of the fares. Practice sessions, they need the practice area, you need balls. Oh, I said, Mary, I think you don't need a manager, you need a financier. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we call it manager here in PFF. <laughs> okay. So I said, oh, okay, anyway, I'll take care of it. So I think they like the experience, mm. but I didn't like it. Because, uh, well, when are they leaving? I asked them. Oh, they leave in three weeks. Wow. I said, oh, okay, anyway, I'll help because uh, I really wanted to help. So we went to China, and the day before, well, we were actually at the airport when our uniforms arrived from PFF, <laughs> okay. and they were like uh, the tropical uniforms that we, we, we have. Well, when the team went to China, it was uh, six, six, six degrees. <laughs> and so, uh, well, short of saying, it was really a disaster. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a wake-up call for me. I knew what the state of uh, the national teams were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, okay, I'll stop with the national team. I'll just concentrate on uh, club football. Yeah. Because we lost to China, I think, 12 zero and nine zero to another team and the only team that we got uh, points was with guam okay. one all and that was because many of their players were also filipinos <laughs> so it was it was a wake-up call and i said okay uh, it was a very traumatic experience for me as a manager and you yeah. see your yeah. your team being uh mauled. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. i said ah, i don't want to do this anymore so i went back said okay thank you uh this is it. Uh, I don't want to handle the team anymore. But then again, January, they came to me and said, hey, would you like to handle the national team now? The senior team. Mm. I said, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I didn't like the experience that I had yeah. with under-19. I said, hey, but the tournament is in October. Okay. I said, ah, so there's time. Yeah. So that's for the Suzuki Cup then. Yeah. So there's time. I said, okay, I'll handle the team, but no interference from PFF. I'll do it my way, everything. Mm. 
trainings. We will all do it. It's a, a choice of players, coach. No, but we have a coach already in uh, Diding. And, no, no, no problem. But I'll get a head coach uh, maybe from outside the country uh, who has international experience. Okay. I said, deal, deal. It was a deal. I didn't know then when I said no interference that it also meant no support. I mean, it's like zero <laughs> interference, <laughs> zero, zero, zero subsidy. <laughs> so, well, but then again, and it was a challenge that I willingly took. Okay. So I had 10 months to prepare. First thing that I did was to get uh, at least uh, the uh, coach that had uh, experience in foreign uh, teams. It was Des Balpin, an Englishman. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I got him in. So the first thing he asked me was, would you like to see beautiful football or would you, would you like to win? Mm -hmm. So really, I just need results because we have been clobbered. Yeah, yeah. So he said, okay. So he got all the players to be physically fit, run all the time. And he said, you know, they can never score if the ball is always on their half. So let's just put the ball on their half and then let's just run after it. Oh? Mm -hmm. That was the game plan that we had. <laughs> but. Uh, but the, the first difficulty that I had was actually to get the players. Because I. Locals, you're talking lo about the lo locals. Lo local players. Well, even the foreign yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I went around and it seemed, well, it was true then, that uh, it was actually more prestigious to be playing in your UAAP team or SAA mm -hmm. team than in uh, the, the national team. Side, yeah. I mean, the national team was a team that has always had a poor record. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, when you, when you play for like varsity, Basal or UP, mm -hmm. and then you had the ladies of the university mm -hmm. watching your game, and uh, for them it was more prestigious. The French benefits. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so I had to rely on uh, the armed forces because they had to play for the national yeah. team. So yeah. I gathered them and uh, well gave them a pep talk. And told them that uh, this is a long-term plan. This is a serious plan. And of course, I knew they were scoffing at the idea because they've had several managers before. Yeah. And it's like, okay, they go to the tournament and then just go back. I mean, there was really no plan for one time, big okay. time. Yeah. So they said, okay, here's another guy who's going to do this. Mm -hmm. But then, slowly, I think I made believers out of them, and they realized that this is not something that's short-term. That I really had serious plans for the national team. And so everybody got to believe in what we were yeah. doing. So we had several training camps together, made sure that somehow they were staying in a decent place, not just in school rooms. Yeah. Um, thankfully, we had uh, other players as well who were willing to join the team. Like, yeah, uh, how did you get that, the, 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 the field force? Well, f first, uh, I concentrated on those who were based here. Okay. So we had Ali, uh, Ali Anton, Moore, Anton. Uh, and the rest of the guys who, who were based yeah. here. Uh, oh, Ian Chifi yeah. from the armed forces, the uh, Yanti, uh, yeah. the regulars. So we were actually able to create a, a, a solid core a cohesive, that, could, yeah. that could at least compete uh, mm -hmm. at, at a decent level. Yeah. And then when we, James and Phil didn't join then. Because uh, I think they were too keen on uh, the methods of uh, death. Mm. So, but they came in after July when they found out that you know, this is really a serious thing. Yeah. So, but when we went to first to Long Tank Cup, so we were able to get the services because somehow we were going around the country for training camps. We could actually, we went to Davao, for example, mm. for a training camp, and we could actually walk on the streets from, from the hotel to the training yeah. area. We could actually walk without people <coughs> mobbing yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Now it's, now it's uh, impossible. Uh, it's impossible, yes. We, we were in Cebu as well yeah. to do some clinics, but slowly we were getting attention from the media as well. Yeah. And, you know, the relatives of players were already giving us emails. Mm -hmm. Ray Yonsan was the first one to come in. Yeah. from Iceland. Oh. Uh, he played in the Long Tank Cup. And then, uh, of course, uh, Chris uh, and Chris Great Bridge Great also came in. Yeah. So uh, Rob Gear came in because he, he always wanted to play for the yeah. national team. Neil Etheridge came in when I was just 
starting and we got to talk and I really asked him to support what we were what is it they emailed you guys Facebook or what uh, they were they were already they were actually already part of the national team before all right in they, they played in uh, Panaad no yeah but how did how did you get them uh, they how did they come to us how did they how did it start uh, off in the 2010 team yeah the first the first ones when we had all of these guys Neil Simon they were actually Chris. already but when I came in they were already here ah. they were already playing for the national oh, okay. team but they didn't have the attention because they didn't get through to... I didn't know that. <laughs> they were I think, yeah, the great witches. Neil was playing okay. Neil, uh, Phil and James, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. and then you had uh, Chris. No, I mean, they were here before I you think, became a manager? Yes. Yeah, I think they 2006, they were already They were here. Yeah. They were here. But they, you know, even if they were here, I've always said that uh, the team is more than a collection of good players. Mm. We really need to make sure that everybody believes yeah, in yeah, what you're doing, yeah. where you want to go, and that you need to be together more often so that you could actually become a team, team not yes. just several uh, good players. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I like what you did during one of your training camps? You made a contest out of it who can sing the national anthem yeah, the yeah. best. I mean, that was good. That was, I mean, who would have thought about that? When, when I saw clips of that, I said, you got something there. You know, because, know. you know, you can see with the other, other countries that, what you say, naturalized players and all that, you'll never see their mouth open. And, you know, I mean, if you come in to, to, to play for your motherland, you know, literally your motherland, because most of them, the mothers are yeah. over yeah. the Filipinos, you have to learn about the culture, the national anthem, because it's, it's going to be a shame when, you know, you play international. Um, cameras on you every national and you know by f face by face you know and then you're not you're not singing the national anthem i mean but what you did was very good mm -hmm. what are the prices man <laughs> actually it was uh, we well we looked at it as a bonding moment as well mm. so we divided them into three groups i think it's three or four but they we put all our money in the pot that's oh. for the for the winning team oh. i think it reached about five thousand euros Really? We were in Germany, and there's 5,000 euros there. But, but there was money just in the old Philippines. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you're more Pinoy than others, I know. Oh, but, uh, yeah. You know, but, yeah, no, I think it was not just the fact that they, they were able to at least bond. Yeah. Uh, also, as you said, uh, I think at the very least, the first thing that you should learn is the, the national anthem. Yeah. Most of them have memorized it, learned it. Of course, they keep forgetting every now and then because yeah. now the focus is, oh, here's a new player, here's another yeah. team that yeah, we have to yeah, play. Yeah. Okay, let's get ready. And uh, we only got together maybe a few days before yeah. a game, so we can't do those kinds of activi yeah. activities too often. But uh, when we go for the, for the dream yeah. uh, match in Maldives, uh, I think that will be one of our activities. You know what I've noticed, Jing? In the beginning, even during when, when that started off, the players like, like here in the Philippine culture, in the schools varsity, basketball teams were different from all the rest of the other varsity sports. Mm -hmm. I saw it myself when the other players, a few foreigners, were a little aloof to the locals. And I know for a fact that there were some others, because I handled some national sites before. Mm -hmm. Military players were up to here, the others had money, they order home uh, room service in the hotel. Yeah, yeah. Yung roommate kawawa, eh, military, syempre, walang pera, yung iba may pera. I've seen that also with the Ascals. But in, in due time, I see the, the camaraderie mm. with all these guys coming from Iceland, from Spain, from England, from whatever, from Holland, from wherever. You know, Jason, the young. Sorry, Jace, but, but you know, the way he comes out is like a brat. But after a while, you know, he can't say shit about that anything with me. Because <laughs> I'm also Dutch, I'm half Dutch also, so he cannot say anything against me. I see that, and now, the, you know, because I've been an official in some of the Ascals Internationals in Rizal, and I can see the camaraderie inside, you know, because I, I go with the match com and all this. You can see there's no more yung kanya kanyang ano. Yeah. It's a team now. Bonded well na talaga. And, you know, like I said, I'm not kissing ass, but I think that that's Dan's uh, idea of putting them. It's not that easy. No, no, Different it's cultures, not. man. They grew up from yeah. different cultures. But, like I said in the first show, 
football is the culture itself. Yeah. And this, this, these guys have learned also the Filipino culture. Yeah. You know, Filipino culture is family right. oriented. Yeah, I mean, Asian. Yeah. Asian orientation is family. And you can see that. And that one, that is brought all the way to the field. That's why the Ascots are very successful. Was that a conscious effort on your part? To no, no, we've, we've, we've seen how, how it is in, during their first, uh, the first time that mm. they come together. Yeah. So the British accents on one side, yeah, uh, sure. Ilongos yeah, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. and then, but uh, we do it, uh, what, what we've done is establish a policy where during mealtime, nobody mixes with the same mm -hmm. uh, uh, culture. Yeah. So you have to be, so there, there's a conscious effort. And I think uh, part of it also comes from the leadership being shown by the professional players. Rob, I mean, okay. you, you see Rob, you see uh, Stefan, yeah. Schrock. They will really try to they go, go away, and go, they go out of their way. You'll see, you'll see Schrock being the first one to get the balls when we go in yeah, practice. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, he has the, he has, you know, he has the standing not to yeah, he, yeah, he could actually yeah, yeah. go straight to yes. the pitch and then uh, we'd be the superstar. Uh, all the all the players would oblige and you know readily get the balls from him. But you no, know, mm -hmm. everybody everybody does their share of the work. Mm -hmm. And I think the example being set by them, as well as the efforts being made by management to somehow try to integrate them. Yeah has uh, paid a lot of dividends when it comes to the cohesion that we have. And even with your staff, I mean, even with your staff, like uh, Lester and all these other guys, you can see it's, I don't know, it's, it's what you want to see. It's just like a simple varsity team. That's, yeah. uh, that's what I want also with my teams anyway, yeah. whether it's high school, the women or the men. It's just like one family, and I see that already with the Ascals, because in the dugouts, you can see that happening. Yeah, yeah. They're all close, you know, close-knitted. And like I said, that's that will only bring positive results because if there's no respect within the team, you know, yeah. there's some there's some teams like that, you know, for a fact that yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to pass here, I can easily pass here, but you're an ass, or I'll, you know, I'll look for another <laughs> pass or something. Yeah, it happens. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it happens anywhere, actually. Yeah. But the thing there is, after all, now, no, let's, let's just finish that with the Ascals now. What, what, what the, I, I'm sure you've heard of it, like, they were saying about global, your your team, your club. Oh, siempre lahat mga askos pupunta dyan kay Mr. Palami. Siya yung manager ng askos eh. What do you have to say about that? No, actually, if I had a choice, I would actually want them to be playing in, in different, different clubs. clubs. Because I suffer, global suffers. If I'm talking yes, as exactly. a global owner. Yeah. We suffer when we have to go out. Hmm. But then again, uh, the other side of it is that when the national team, because that's the priority for me, when the national team has to go out, yeah. then I, I wouldn't have problems asking permission from anybody. Yeah. Because then I just let them go. Yeah, yeah, and then, okay, yeah. and then we adjust uh, our team depending on, yeah. first we ask for a change in the schedule. If they don't give it, then yeah. we play uh, with whatever we have on the bench. Yeah. But, uh, and also, you know, when we, we try to uproot them from where they are, I mean, it takes a lot of cost to do that. Oh, yeah. So, I if uh, I, I understand that we, our league right now, uh, the UFL, is not yet in a position where owner, uh, where the winner of the league, for example, or the cup, actually gets. Uh, Get your seats. Yeah, <laughs> more, more than their cost. I mean, yeah. it, all the teams right now, it, it's a cost center. Yes. The, the club is a cost center. Yeah. So for me, if I hit the cost where I can have an Ascal player based in Manila mm. so that they can train more with the team, yeah. then uh, at the same time they can play with the club, then f for me, at least the cost is divided already. Yeah. I don't have to pay for his fare coming here from exactly. wherever, Italy, Germany. Or, or Europe, so he's already here. I don't have to pay for his salary. Yeah. At least bawas na yun sa cost yeah. sa Ascals. And at the same time, he's here with the team. He can play with. Uh, we can have local practices, yeah. local training camps, and then I'll have more players based here than having to get them from outside the country. So uh, I'd gladly, if 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 any club wants to 
offer <laughs> any of Daskal's players in my in the global roster yes. uh, something yeah. that I'd, uh, I'd be willing to give them out <laughs> because first it's 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 draining yeah. the global. You heard it. <laughs> you just tell me. You just tell me who you want. But yeah, then of course these players. I mean, like if you bring Stefan Schrock here. Mm. Yeah, well, how much does he get? Maybe he gets maybe 25,000 euros, euros a week. A week. Wow. So, that's... I calculate my 51. Wow. Yeah, that's... Oh, or maybe Neil or any other yeah, yeah, players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really expensive, so... Can you, can you take us back to, to 2010? I just wanted... Yeah, okay. I, I, I wanted to pick your brain about that. Obviously, we were one of the worst teams in this region. Yes. Right? We were getting clobbered on a regular basis. And you're given the responsibility of changing things. Right. Obviously, it's, it, it's a lot of expense for you. There's not a track record that you can bank on to be like, yeah, did you always believe that right now, in three years from now, we are the best team in Southeast Asia? Officially, that's incredible. Did you always believe that when you were, when you were just starting out with the Ascals? Was that the goal? No, I, I always believed that we were better than the rankings that we were in. Yeah. Because, I mean, I could see the players, they were, the, you know, we work hard and... Filipinos are naturally graceful and uh, they, you know, they're, they're hard to fight it out on the pitch. Right. But I think I, I, I felt that the team just needed direction and needed somebody who could actually, because the players then, was, there's, a, there's a tournament, okay, let's band together, practice and then play and then when they come back, everybody goes back to Army, Air Force, their mother teams. Yeah. Their mother teams. But there was really no conscious effort to build the team as a team uh, on a long-term basis. Mm. But at that time, I, I felt, you know, all my friends, well-meaning friends were telling me, how, how, could, how could you put your money there? I can imagine, right? <laughs> the best, the, the only time that we were in uh, ESPN play of the day was when we got clobbered 13-1 by Indonesia. <laughs> the other way, pa. No, uh, the uh, negative and one, then, pa. Well, why would you want to do that? And I said, well, first, I, I really love the game. Yeah. And I knew that we had a chance. 2010 for me was like, I, I, I just wanted to check how far we could go with ample preparation. Because there was never a time when we, I think the best preparation we had was a one month mm. training camp before a game. I said, oh, I have 10 months. Let me see how, where, where we can go. And we have several tournaments we could join in. So... And then after that, once I get to prove to others that this could actually happen, mm. then I was waiting for somebody to, uh, for PFF, to now really realize the potential th th that they have in the national team and then invest in it and then put their resources in it. Yeah. I'm still waiting though. <laughs> you're still waiting. Uh, your guess will be as good as ours and with regards to that. Well, we're talking about players. I'm going to put you in a spot now. We've talked about it, but we were just the two of us on the... Okay. Uh, no, now, there's, there's, uh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> With Rufo. Oh, okay. What is that hula baloo? What is, what is happening? Because I hear two sides always. We've talked. I've talked also to the manager of the other, of the other team. I mean, let's, let's not... We're not supposed to be political correct. Yeah. yeah. Stallions and Global are in a tug of war. And the only one that suffered was Rufo. I mean, they're pushing through with that one-year ban or suspension, right? Well, I hope not. They have. To, I hope they reconsider. Oh, I hope so. Too because uh, of, uh, no, no, just for that, uh, for the ban. If you look at FIFA rules, if a player terminates his contract mm. with uh, just cause, there's a rule for that. And then if he terminates his contract without just cause, mm -hmm. you know the maximum suspension that they can give? Four to six months. Four to six months only. For, for termination without just cause, huh? okay. just in case there's no just cause. Yeah. But between, for the global, uh, for the Rufo case, you know, I've always told Ernie before that, before then, that if he's not a free agent, we're not going to offer him anything. Yeah. Because there were people who were saying, hey, why don't you get Rufo? No, if he's not a free agent, mm -hmm. we're not going to get him because we don't want to... Uh, break ties with the Stallion or yeah, any other yeah, club. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we will respect their contract. When, uh, after August 15, uh, there Which was... Which is the end of the contract? Uh, yes, the, it's the end of the contract. 
there was an uh, of uh, well there was uh, communication asking me if we could have a uh, roof in our team i said let me check his contract with stallions and he gave us a copy of uh, his contract of course he erased the amount because mm -hmm. he'll negotiate with that mm -hmm. and i asked my lawyers to review it and these are the same lawyers who review my my contracts in in my businesses yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, they do really good due diligence yeah, yeah. And on everything and they told me, oh, okay, he's a free agent. So that's when we offered him a contract. So basically, the contention is whether, uh, because the, on the term of his contract, they said August 15, 2012 to August 15, 2013. Okay. This contract may be renewed for another year at the option of the club. That's what this contract said. So I said, okay, first, we have to know whether that option was exercised mm. because it, it it does not automatically give you yeah. an extension and whether it was exercised in time yeah. when we asked Rufo he said there was no communication from the club and all these things and then when we raised it to stallions lo and behold they gave us a copy of an email you know you know mm. when you print, print an out. email uh -huh. there's a two and all those uh -huh. and then they were saying hey, this is to basically addressing the issue that we were <coughs> we were saying uh, was there a notice? Okay, so we asked Rufo whether he received that in his email. He said, "No, that was never that never came to me." He said anyway, we looked at his contract, and then it said there that official notifications for uh, when, when, to officially notify a player mm. between the two parties, uh, it could be done in two ways. One is by personal de personal delivery, and the other is registered mail. Not an, e oh, an email is email. so. Oh, wow. Then again, even if they actually sent it, which, uh, well, I don't want to say mm -hmm. it was doubtful, but anyway, even if they did, it was still not in the mode mm -hmm. that their contract said okay. by personal delivery or by by online uh, hard copy. Uh, oh, hard copy now. now even let us say further that it could be accepted that the email is they still have to go to to negotiations mm -hmm. that is not possible that the extension is only on the on the period yeah. you also have to agree on the other terms and uh, conditions of the contract yeah. Yeah. now if you can see because they presented this evidence uh, to UFL uh, the exchange between Rufo and uh, one of their managers, okay. and it was, and it clearly showed there that Rufo was thinking, "Oh, so where's the offer?" Because uh, uh, unofficially they were saying, "Okay, we would, we want you to we want to extend your contract," and Rufo was saying, "Okay, well, where's the offer?" Okay. So that was it. They never got into a uh, an agreement, uh, an agreement. Mm -hmm. and if there's no agreement, there's no contract. And isn't it supposed to be maybe before, uh, like, I mean, if I had a contract with, with LaSalle, let's say, and then my contract's until a certain date, if they wanted to renew my contract my serv for my services, I don't know if it's the right thing to say that it should be, the talks should have been before the end of the contract? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I is, mean, that, is that the way it's supposed to be, or yeah. it, it should uh, be uh, after the contract? Uh, 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 well, you have to exercise that option yeah. before the end of the contract. Otherwise, yeah. you have no contract to yeah, base. Yeah, if, you're, if your contract stays until the 15th uh -huh. of a certain month, the 16th, yeah. you are yeah. a free guy. Yeah. Right? And th that's why, for me, it was simple. Uh, it is, it's really simple. Yeah. In fact, uh, I so just saw the article. UFL asked for a legal opinion from their mm. legal, legal counsel, yeah. counsel. Uh -huh. and their legal counsel actually initially already gave the opinion that it seems that Global has a better right on Rufo. But instead of ruling on the case, UFL, uh, UFL said, okay, uh, we defer the ruling on, mm. on uh, Rufo, but meanwhile, while we are still deliberating, Rufo cannot play with Global unless, or any other team, or practice with any other team unless he has written consent from Stalyan. But then we go back to the same, same thing. Yeah, what would be the basis for the written consent? 
if he does not have a contract. Yeah. So he's not uh, binded by anything. Yes. So I think uh, Rufo already elevated this case to FIFA okay. because it, it's really it's not just him that uh, is actually suffering suffering because also the club because we have to pay for his expenses. Yes. yes. Now just to if Ernie, Philbert, uh, RJ, you guys are listening, don't worry. We'll 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 yeah. give you your time uh, to guest on our show. So you know so. We both go, we yeah. always go both sides. So we're not hitting anyone here. We just want to know because Rufo was the MVP, yeah. the yeah. last lead. And leading scorer. Uh, leading scorer, the Golden Boot Awardee and all that. Then suddenly he's the player that has no team now. Uh, how did the UFL get to that one year ban no, on Rufo? I mean, how uh, did they get to it? Where did they well, get, where, you know, where, that's what yeah, I want to know. Well, first, uh, because in their decision they were saying, okay, you should not practice and play. But we were, we were, we had Rufo for the Singapore yeah. Cup, yeah. and he had already been playing with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we actually asked him to practice and play with us for the Singapore Cup, okay. which was not. I I don't think Singapore Cup is within the jurisdiction of UFL. So uh, I, I was wondering why they would even go into another FA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another federation. Yes. That, uh, yeah, I heard that they wrote. But it was they before. wrote. Actually, the SFA. actually, it was funny because yeah. uh, they wrote, Maybe I, I don't know who wrote, maybe it was Talions or I'm, I don't mm -hmm. know exactly. Mm -hmm. There was a letter sent to Singap uh, uh, the mm -hmm. Singapore FA. And then I, they asked us, Tanjong Pagar was there. Uh, I was on the other side of the table, and then the competitions committee mm -hmm. was there. Because Tanjong Pagar was saying, hey, he's banned in, in the Philippines. Why is he allowed? We will protest. Mm -hmm. That was before the second game. Yeah. And then uh, we showed them the, the facts, the okay. contracts, how it is there. And they agreed to... Allowed him. They allowed him. I mean, as far as uh, they were concerned, okay. we submitted everything. Uh, that's in, the in thing. Order. I think that's that's one of our problems here now in the Philippines that we have. The football per se is moving up. Mm. You know, we're in we're in develop we're developing pro uh, and progressing wonderfully. That's on the field. That's on the pitch. But I think what the what we need to learn more now here in the Philippines, PFF, the local FAs, UFL, and all that is the proper management, I think, of how it's done. I mean, everywhere else. Because if we just decide how the, by ourselves, but not really understanding the, the, the mechanics of what is happening, then that would be, you know, counterproductive, I'd say. No, I think it's no? important what you're saying is because football is growing, but everybody has to grow with it. Yes. The organization, even the federation. Yes, yes. I mean, we have our own uh, problems with the competitions yeah. uh, that PFF mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. undertaking. Yeah. Uh, the UFL. I mean, of course, everybody's trying, but we really have to step up. Yeah. It's also the officiating in, in, in uh, 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 all these things. Oh, yeah. We have to be ready to take on the growth because otherwise, um, you know, we'll be left um, with. Um, what I see, because, you know, I mean, through the decades I've been in Philippine football, but I think that's also everywhere else in all the other, at least I could say the other Asian countries because I've spoke, I have have quite a number of friends in AFC and in the other, like in FAM of Mal Malaysia, Singapore, yeah. and uh, Thailand. Uh, ang lumalabas dito, patasan ng ihe. You know what I'm saying? Yung, okay lang magpatasan ng ihe, pero yung marunong, hindi yung, yung hindi yung basta patasan ng ihe na lang na, I mean, you, you see that everywhere, eh? Because it, it boils down now, it's not only, you know, it's not only uh, for football per se. What I'm saying is, yung, there's a certain mentality that here in the Philippines or Southeast Asia have. It's an oriental trait, what I heard. It's like the crab mentality thing. Uh, well, you know, when, when I'll tell you one thing. I, told, I think I told you this time, um, years ago, when when we all started, before the Ascals craze and all this went up, there were some pages on Facebook, football pages, you know. And I used to 
comment there also, you know, or whatever topic it is. Basta basically, Philippine football. And then, biglang, ito na yung Ascal's craze, no? Biglang, aba, putres na yan. Every time they can have it now in the Philippines, are very all experts na, football gurus <laughs> yeah. na. That's yeah, why that's I, I don't anymore, uh, how do you true. say, I don't anymore even comment anymore. Sometimes, unless I see something really stupid, <laughs> idiotic. Yeah. Wait, you you can't tell for yourself. You, you I can't, can't tell myself, but I have, to, I have to post something. Yeah, you gotta press the caps lock. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen it, I've seen it. No, I'm, I've just, seen I'm, it. I'm, I'm glad that when I see threads like that, I close the thread. <laughs> <laughs> I just give up the plain, simple thing. Uh, the facts, right? It's right there. I mean, I, you guys know I eat, breathe, sleep football, and and then I need to know. Man, my family's alive because of, because of football. So I mean, I've been into it so so long. Yeah. When sometimes all this, I'm glad that a lot of the press, a lot of media mm. now are getting to football, which is all good, which which we need also, no. Uh, but there are some. Groups or individuals that are not, how do you say, in it like we are. Yeah. Parang, um, you know, it might take some time. Ihin, diba? <laughs> it, meron pa rin. I mean, it's, it's in Europe, meron rin mga tumitira. O ngayon, sino tinitira? Nobody else but the FIFA president. <laughs> which is also stupid on his part. Yeah. He's the FIFA president going down on missing Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. What a dork. You don't say those things. Yeah. You know? You yeah. don't say those things. I mean, you're the FIFA president for crying out loud. These are just uh, players. Actually, th you know th that's the reason why I can't do the same thing you do. What? You really comment on... I mean, I read the thread, and sometimes I'm... Hey, what are you saying? But I can't do it. It's, it's, it's like I'm the manager of the national team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to be more diplomatic... I'll leave that to me. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll <laughs> send know. over my With comment. Pleasure. Uh, text me. Yeah, that's why I can't I can really... Even on Twitter, I mean, so I, I see a lot of hmm. uh, people... Yeah. Be really active on Twitter, hitting everyone. Mm. You know. You know there will always be haters. I think, because it's a human trait anyway. Jealousy, uh, yeah. insensitivity, yeah. <laughs> uh, all these other negative traits. I think that's part of being a human being. <laughs> you know, uh, when I just started coaching, I was already warned. What's funny is I was warned by two Spaniards. Okay, about Hans, you're growing up too fast. You, I mean, I mean the football scene, no? Mm -hmm. And you're too vocal and all that. Watch your back. I, I, until now, I still take that. I'm talking about 32 years ago. Okay, I still remember that at the back of my head. But you know, it's come to a point now. Like you, Dan, you, you can say what you want to say when people are saying things against you, or saying against what the program is, about mm -hmm. any of your players. Because we've been there, you know? We. There are only a few of us that are trying. There are a lot of fakers, so to say. You are, there's a lot of you here outside fakers who are just joining the bandwagon because that's anyway that's a trait, a human trait. You know that something comes up, salita ejan para makilala ako. You know, people tell me, coach, lakas mo ng dating mo kasi pag dating mo yun na. Eh ano pa kailang ko? Wala mong tinitir, I'm stepping on anybody's toes. Just doing things for football. Just because I say something right. And you know that you're doing it wrong, you'll take it against me because you have more clout. Yeah. Bullshit, you stay there. You know, that's why I'm not doing anything with national team. <laughs> that's why I go, no, no. Yeah, that's right. I think that was a record. What is that, 45 minutes? What? That was the first time you swore. You just yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's, hey, that's a long time. Bro, Bernie, bro, Felipe. <laughs> He's being a good boy. I'm <laughs> improving. No, Dan's daughters are around, so <laughs> you gotta be quick. No, they're, they're only ones who, who you know, who, after a long trip, yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah, you yeah, go yeah, home, yeah, yeah, at you least get, you got to see. You need to release sometimes. You need some release, if you know what I mean. Anyway, <laughs> that's another show. That's for Mo. Uh, I, Dan, there, before we even started the show, since last night, there were really. Uh, you say questions for, through Twitter, Facebook, and all that. Yeah. Can we have some few questions uh, we can throw Dan's way? Uh, like, for example. Aha. Yun lang. Jing. Okay. <laughs> I like to know what Mr. Palami <coughs> take is on our women's national team and their chances at the upcoming SEA Games. I think we have one of the stronger uh, women's teams <coughs> in uh, Southeast Asia. Um, we could upset and we could be champions actually. I, in believe, that, I believe so too. <clears throat> I just hope that uh, they fix their internal problems. Yeah. Oh, we always, uh, you know, 
anyway, we are here in hands on. So yeah, yeah. you know, there are, we we still have uh, some problems with uh, not really the team itself, but rather in the running of. Uh, the whole women's program. Okay. Because I think we need more women coaches to be involved. Exactly. But yeah. uh, well, I think Ernie has done right in uh, getting strong players from uh, other countries. Yeah. And I think this will bode well at least for the short term. But yeah. what what I'm concerned though is uh, the long term. I think in the long term we need to back this up with a strong women's uh, development. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that I have I haven't seen for the past uh, years. Yeah. I mean, a, a, a real effort to have a women's program that's really going to feed yeah. our women's team right Real now, one time, big time, lang, uh, Right now, we have to rely on on our fill, fill, uh, our foreign based yes. players, uh, just like the Ascals. But at least now, I see a lot of programs being undertaken by local. by the local mm -hmm. uh, football clubs as yeah. well as uh, Philippine Football yeah. Federation. I think it has to be the same way for for the women. The women. And, but just to answer the question, I think we really have a Chance. very strong team. Yeah, I, I believe in that. <coughs> like I told Ernie, when uh, he we had a friend with my university men's team, uh, I told Ernie that this is the first time that I see, with all due respect to the past women's players, I'm not, I'm not insulting anyone here. I'm just saying because this, uh, uh, we have so many Philams. Yeah, actually, uh, a classmate of mine's daughter is playing. Yeah. You know, and I, when I saw him, I said, "Buten lang hindi mo pinasok sa track and field na football na tungo ng anak mo." Because, but his his uh, so James Wilson, you better be watching me and spread the word. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> he was a track and field guy, and a good one at that. Then I was so I was pleasantly surprised when Ernie said Wilson, and I saw the father's name. I said, hey, hey, so wait a minute, I know this guy. Came from also from Lasal. Well, that's a good thing. He was older than me. 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 He they don't give up, even though they're playing boys, and they were all there. And I think there was one boy who is in the U.S. Olympic, I don't yeah. know, or whatever. Really? Women's, uh, no, man. You can see, you can see the confidence we, in them. We're a strong team. At lahat sila, mukhang Pinay talaga. Okay? Not half, I don't know, dads in America, no, some are. But a lot of them, you can see that they, they, they... The Filipino blood is there. They were born here, maybe, or then, you know. Uh, the couple, the parents are both Filipinos, and you see that they're, they're into it. You know what I'm saying? They're into it. I mean, it, when I say into it, into it being Filipina. Yeah. So I just hope Ernie continues and you know doing this and making like what Dan said, uh, uh, bring the program further on. You know, and, and we all know now that there are a lot of girls playing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. young ones. Oh yeah. Elementary, you know, ten, twelve. In Sobel, we have. We have 10 and 12 year olds playing. That are better than me. And in my yeah. grassroots program, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we, have, we have seven, eight year olds, girls, yeah. six year olds, girls playing already. Yeah. Which is what I've been trying to preach to all the parents before. Yeah. Let the girls, let their daughters play. You know, that's like one school. I'm sorry about a stupid rule. Oh, it's a really stupid rule. Uh, they stopped all these other varsity programs like football uh, because from what I heard is. Kasi daw, baka yung productive system ng mga babae, eh, ma... <laughs> Sira ulo kayo, because... And, and they had a really good no, team. I've had a lot of... Really? Yeah! Cross my heart. And they had a really good team, too. Yeah, they have a lot of team. good players. I mean, I have had a few players, quite a number actually, that came from a high school and played for me in De La Salle University, and they're mothers now. So what the hell? <laughs> okay, anyway, that's another, that's another show. We'll, we'll tackle that. Uh, another question? Any possible foreign-based Filipinos in the horizon we are eyeing that can add depth to our team, especially to our defense? Hmm. Well, there are several Filipinos already uh, that we have actually been talking to. One being, uh, he was in uh, Panad with us, Martin. Martin, Martin from Switzerland? From, from Swiss? From uh, Switzerland. He can actually... Switzerland. 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 Uh, Sorry. He can actually uh, play holding... 
Holding. Okay. Holding uh, mid and therefore part of the defense. Then we have uh, several other two other players. No giants. Uh, one is. Uh, I think there are six feet uh, above. Me. Above. You know, it would be great a Filipino team that has six three defenders. You know, six two oh, defenders. It's together with me. Yeah, just like when uh, Nonong was playing, huh? he was a central defender. Nonong was well, everywhere, man. <laughs> yeah. Bert was everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, trivia. You guys don't know. There's only one Filipino who was playing in basketball. There's mythical fives. Asian, I don't know if it's Asian games or what they call it, ABC also before. And Berto Nasan was the only Filipino that was including the first 11 Asian mm -hmm. uh, selection. Wow. Uh, that, uh, that time, it was a Japanese big dude guy, uh, a superstar from Japan, really striker, and, and, and uh, Korean who played well in first division in Germany, Chabum or something like that name, and Bert was included there. Way, way before yeah, I don't know, I researched Bringing us back. Okay. <laughs> Google lang yan. <laughs> <laughs> Another trivia. <clears throat> Rizal Stadium, maybe you never thought that it was filled up for a local tournament. 30s, 40s, 50s, I think. NCAA days only. Rizal was jump at. Watching football. Watching yeah. football, wow. just football. No track, no none, just football. You know? Uh, before my time. Uh... <laughs> But it was filled up. And then basketball, boom. Na, the interest went into basketball. Mm -hmm. But football, you know, Waki Preisler had this book, like the Almanac. Would you believe that the Philippines used to clobber China, Japan, all of these nations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 11, 15 nil. Philippines up. I think I mean, the, biggest, the biggest win that we had was against Japan. Right. It's a 15 something. Yeah, something like 15, yeah. And then the biggest loss that we had was against Japan uh, 30 years after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Even Taiwan. It's kind of shocking yeah. how. Actually, we had a very thriving football uh, yes. community then. Yeah. It's unfortunate that uh, for a while we abandoned, yeah. well, maybe not abandoned, but the interest in football transferred yeah. into basketball. I still, you know. I still believe in command responsibility. The people on top are supposed to be the ones that should carry a program. Yeah. You know, like, it's good. I believe in Nonong. Because like I said, the first time I came back, first time I entered the uh, Philippine Football Federation house was when Nonong became the president. I mean, the one in Pasig, that was the only time I went in. When Nonong was there, I believed in him because he was my teammate, uh, like Bert. But excuse me, I was a rookie. They were seniors. Okay, okay. Okay. Age college. Get your, get your age right. Get, uh, get, oh, rookie, almost forgot to say that. Uh. Rookie, Nonong and Bert, senior. <laughs> and that UP team was very hard to beat because there were so many UP players that were, uh, how do you say? Uh, uh, commercial teams. Uh. No, there were not, nothing, no commercial. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, the only commercial time you talk about was San Miguel. Mm -hmm. And that was only when? You know, that's... It's the 80s. 90s? Know, about the 80s, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was also the Air Force Army that were lording it yeah. over. Of course, because they're getting paid to do it. Yeah. Well, before there was no such thing. I mean, you go and play, what do you get? Nothing, you have to buy your own shoes. Everything else you have to buy. And then the uniform, my God. Crispa t-shirts, RFM t-shirts. I improved na yun pag nag-RFM. Pag one o'clock game. Now it's different, put, putina, huh? Puti na labi namin, dahil sa init, tapos grabe. Pag umulan, sos. I was only about 100. And, and, and you, you had to wash it because if you had a game the, the next, <laughs> next day, day yeah, you had to wash it. Then... Ang sikreto, sa likod ng refrigerator. Ito yun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hindi pa uso microwave. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, do, do the national team players, they, the, the new ones that are coming in, these foreign-based ones, um, do they come to you? Do you guys source them out? How does that work? No, that's a good thing about internet now. And uh, the good thing about Filipinos because uh, they're always proud of their relatives. So we right. get emails from you know, for every, uh, let's say, Phil Young husband that you have, or uh, Neil Etheridge, or Martin, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know, Stubel? Is Stubel? it Stubel? Stubel. Stubel. You go ahead, you, you say that. Anyway, no, make a Martin, you know. And then <laughs> there's, there's 50 more lemons that are yeah. being of, recommended. Of so we really have to, when, when I started, it's like, okay, let's bring them in. So, to pay for their fare, everybody comes in, 
get uh, tested and then that's the only time you see uh, it's not mm -hmm. speaking of that <coughs> last year payan i don't know i never mentioned to you or i did maybe in passing jerry codinera and the masters the legends pba legends they go around right, even right. in europe yeah uh, they play basketball games there right they were in austria something happened i think didn't push through but the mother of alaba yes it alaba yeah david, alaba david David Alaba. Alaba. Yeah. The Alaba. mom said that her son wanted to touch base with us. And I told Jerry, I said, let me know, give me a contact, and I'll direct it to Dan Palami. He who's the one who's in charge, is managing yeah. the Ascals. He, I think he, I think what Alaba wants is that he knows there's a lot of other Filipinos because he can never play for the Philippines anymore. Yeah. Yes. Right? But there are there are other Philip Phil Germans that want to play. So if Anybody knows Jerry? I think I don't know if I have his number yet. But I'll, I'll get in touch yeah. with him. Lemon or not, it's worth a try. Yeah. Right? I mean, but if it's a first division player, yeah. champion player, that and, and, and recommend some Philip Phil uh, Phil Ger Germans, so why not? No? Yeah, certainly. Well, we also have our, more or less after three years, we have our scouting uh, Teams. system. Mm. and. Mm, Fine tuned already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think <clears throat> we would be no, we would know almost <clears throat> all the Filipinos yeah, yeah, who are yeah. in the uh, first and second division. Do we have already a uh, how do you call uh, a database? Database for all. No, this well, it's it's it, we have it. it works. We have we, we it have it. Yes. Now, for those who don't know, by the way, David Alaba is uh, the left back for Bayern Munich, Bayern, who yeah. won the Champions League. Of course, he started that game. He's, he's a he's a solid. Yeah, he's yeah. incredible. Uh, and when they won the the Champions League, um, he actually draped the flag yeah. around yes. him, Philippine, Philippine flag. flag. It is a shame that he can't play for us anymore. Yeah, because he yeah. played was it Austria? Austria, Austria, Austria. Austria. Yeah. Was, yeah. Well, Germany actually wanted him as well. That's why yeah. he was. Uh, he played for Austria only when he was 17. Yeah. So they for the they, they, for the new senior for the side. National, yeah, wow. For the senior side. So they put him in so that he can play for another yeah. team. At 17. So that's how you do it. Oh, uh, nice one. That's a segue. Then we go talk <coughs> about the that new rule that Amani Aguinal cannot play for the what anyway. <laughs> that's another one we can tackle later. Yeah. On. yeah. So, yeah. Okay. But hopefully, when all of these things happen. Dan is still around. Because I think, Dan, you're a hard act to follow. I'm not kissing ass, okay? I'm not kissing yeah, ass. I'll drink water now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, if, 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 if Dan retires from this or pursues anything and goes back to his business and all this, and I mean, concentrate fully there, I think we need somebody that uh, has the same vision as Dan. Yeah. And has the same untiring, what, what word? You're the English major, but I'm the English major. <laughs> I'm a bull, bull, so I don't know what I'm talking about. No, but they, I think they know what you mean. But I think that's slowly in the Federation. I've been showing them how this is done. I've been mm -hmm. asking them to be more involved now yeah. uh, in, in the goings-on of the national team. Because, uh, frankly, uh, somebody who comes in needs to be aware of what he's getting into yep, exactly. because it's not you know, everybody thinks it's a glamorous job ah, man you're mm -hmm. of the Ascas you go there you travel but then everybody you know, they don't know that you pay for your own travel you pay for uh, 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 <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, and my daughters are asking me whether they still have something for their future but they don't have a gambler because I know some, some managers yeah. before they're losing much of oh, shit what's this but like one night you know, one night in the casino yeah. trying to get back oh. more but, <laughs> and they lose more. But it's when when I had new kids, mm. it was like when you want to buy something, you think, hey, okay, maybe maybe I, I better save. Uh, I can buy this mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. my kid. Mm -hmm. The same thing with the Ascals now. I want to buy a new car, oh. and then you count it in in uh, the number of training camps you could have. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I want to buy a new car. Hey, wait, wait. There's a training camp coming in Bahrain, Germany, and then the U.S. will be going there. Okay, okay, maybe le next time, next time. Maybe if I find something else. But that's how that's how things are. That's uh, that's uh, like we have Ceres Lasalle, okay? Ceres Lasalle Football Club here. Like team owner Leary Jansson, I was about a month ago when he came over with, 
with the sales team that's playing the UFL Cup. I was, I'm, I was convinced, I'm still am convincing him to make his field there in Bacola turf, artificial turf, <laughs> right? He was telling me, Solly, really, yeah. no, he's a quiet guy, he's a yeah, nice yeah. and noisy guy. Uh, he was saying, Yerap yan ko, kasi ang laki ng itong ilang milyon, gano'n. Kaya may gusto kong bilhin rin eh, kotse. Yeah. I'll not say anymore what kind of car, baka sabi ng mga tao, sobrang man itong gagod to. Hindi. But it does the same thing, he was saying, baka hindi ako makabili ng kotse yung bala ko, kasi yan gaso. Sabi ko, bayan, ano kasi yung kotse bibili mo? Aeroplano ba yan o ano? <laughs> kasi we're talking about, like I said, Sobel, the field we spent 12M. So mga ka din, sa'yo siguro mga 13 to 15 lang. Ano, ano bibili mo, jet? Uh, I don't want to say lang what kind of car he, he, he plans to buy. But if he does buy that, you'll know he's, he's the one when you see Makolo. <laughs> he's the only one that's going to have that. No, Next. he has a very good car now. Yeah, well, I guess. Yeah. He's got a lot. No, I mean, I think, he's got uh, a lot of buses around. I think, <laughs> I think uh, in more ways than one, he's more sensible than I am because then he stuck to a club team and I, uh, to, uh, I got stuck with the national You know, team. I've been forcing him actually two nights ago since I came back. Two nights ago, three nights ago. We're still talking. I said, you gotta take over some, you know, in, in the Jansons at least. He and his brother Rick, he can take care of Bacolo and whatever. But he says he doesn't like politics, because when yeah. you get in, people, you'll get haters here. That's true, yeah. that's true. He's doing fine right now with but the I think, Ceres. I think he will, re, he will make for yeah. a good uh, national team manager if he wants to take on some of the... Well, which he was supposed to be, I just don't remember what team that was, but something came up again. It talks to the PFF, or I don't know who he, they were talking to in the PFF, but didn't push through. Anyway, uh, another question for Dan? Oh, I was just going to ask, though, before we get to that, I was just going to ask, like, how do you spend your time? I mean, obviously, you still got your business. You, 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 you're the owner of Global, and you're the manager of, of the Ascals. How, how do you balance that? You know, that's, that's to be honest, I really don't know. It's a day-to-day -day thing. That's why when uh, even my daughters, they ask me, okay, what's the schedule? I say, okay, I check my with my secretary. Okay, today it's going to be here. And wow. Because even with the business alone, it's like we have five offices that yeah. I have to that's make sure. Crazy. And then you have Global, and then you have Ascals. And then, of course, uh, yeah, I have my real estate company. So, well... That's why I'm very much thankful of uh, the technology now. You can call on the phone. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think if you were not in football, you'd have grown uh, 10 years older. If you were not in football. Yeah, I think so. No, no I'll tell you a secret before I uh -oh. uh, read yeah. the question. Well, you know why I'm, I'm, I owe a lot to football. Not just because I enjoy the game. Way back in 2003, when I started APT Global, mm. my business, we were really down, no, no contracts, everything. I had to sell all the uh, condos that I had, all the cars that I had, because I was starting my own business, and it was a, it was, I mean, it came to a point where I actually, before I go to the office, so I didn't, we didn't, our office was bare. Yes. Before I went there, <coughs> sometimes I took uh, the taxi or the, the old uh, van that we had, mm. and, I had to go through the pockets of my pants just to see if I still had money there. You know. Wow! It, it was really at that point in time. Our first contract was eighty thousand pesos, mm -hmm. and all my managers were happy. Eh, we go there to sign, <laughs> and it's like, Oof. And, and then of course uh, it developed. And the only thing that kept me going was our Saturdays football, football. in UP. So Monday. You just came from the game, so you talk about, hey, that is a nice game that we had. We, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't lose too much against uh, this uh, team who had the ladies with them. So <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, I could have gone crazy because, of course, we didn't have a contract. And then Thursday, you look forward to a game on Saturday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a game. And on Friday, oh, tomorrow, we have a game. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that kept me wow. going. So when I finally got my contracts the, f the first I, I didn't hesitate to help football and that's what I'm that's why I'm still here and that's because I owe a lot to football and I, I think uh, I see, that's why they say God works in mysterious ways so that's how that's how I'm indebted to football and that's the reason why I have always and will always support it I'm, I'm the same thing but nothing to do with money <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't get money from football. But, uh, the, the, the same thing. The same reason why I'm in football. 
Yeah, I mean, like I said before, I dropped out yeah. of school. I didn't want to do anything else. Then football gave me a chance to go to college and everything. And from that time on, I'm still here. But only a few years back. <laughs> anyway, next question is, Dan, will the Philippine Peace Cup be a yearly tour? Uh, tournament. Tournament for the Haskells. <laughs> How do they intend to improve it? I mean, I don't think that's for them. That's actually for the Philippine that's Football the Federation. PFF, yeah. But I think... That is something that we should encourage the PFF to yes. to do. I mean, it's we already have the rights to yes. the Peace Cup, and I think for the past two years we had uh, several countries uh, take part in it. Yeah. And I think the best uh, way to improve it is to bring in stronger teams. Exactly, and more teams. Yeah, more teams. Uh, I could have answered the same thing. I mean, all of us I think would have the same answer for that. Yeah, yeah. we need to get more teams in and uh, stronger teams. Whether we make it or not as champions, doesn't really matter because that's a, what we're after is the... Yeah, but, but that's because you know football. But uh, for those who don't really know football, it's either you're champions or exactly. you, uh, you're, you're, you're not interested in you anymore because you didn't win the yeah. game. Okay. No, that's, that, that, that's why, like we were talking earlier about in Facebook, the people who big learn, Everybody is a football guru now yeah. in the Philippines. Uh, a lot of folks don't know what's really happening. There are programs, the PFF, the coaching staff, the, 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 the management staff and all that. There are certain programs that we have to follow. It's not just everyone has to win. Sometimes you got to take two steps back for one big step forward. Uh, besides, we need to learn to lose first before we can start winning. Just because we've been winning and doing well with the Ascals, doesn't mean that we're going to win all the time. Right? I mean, there will always be somebody, like I always tell my players, there will always be somebody bigger, That's right. stronger, faster, better, totally. That's it. What are you going to do about it? Work on your own yeah. and do better, make your own program, make, it bet make yourself a better person. In this case, make our organizational uh, group like with the PFF, you know, with even the UFL and FA and whatever, and the local FAs, do something. Don't just sit on your fat asses and do not, don't do anything, just talk and talk. Do something. You know, like they say, talk is cheap. Uh, what Dan has done, what Dan has done, what Dan has done. Yeah, that take that, take that. What Dan has done is not, uh, what you say, a one-time big shot, a one-time big time thing. Uh. You know, uh, he didn't put his mouth, in his, he didn't put his foot in his mouth. Just continue with a certain program, and uh, you know, like I said, talk is cheap. Uh, talk doesn't bring results, actually. Yeah, we will have friendlies, of course, against stronger teams as part of our preparations. Like on November nine, we play uh, UAE. UAE, that's a, a very strong team, team yeah. who almost got to the playoffs World of uh, the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, they lost to Uzbekistan, mm. a very cl uh, close game, but. It, it, they, were, they were almost in, yeah. and we will we'll be playing them. We are not playing them to, I mean, expect to really win, but we are there. We will fight, uh, yeah. uh, we will give them a good fight. Give them Maybe we'll lose, yeah. but then I think that's part of growing up as well for, for a team like us. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're ranked in the 70s. We are 137. Yeah, right speaking now. of Uzbekistan, they start the same way. Yeah, yeah. They were clubbing all over. But the program, and, and Uzbekistan is not, it's not a rich country. I think we're even better off than they. Okay? But they st I know from years past, they. Remember, Uzbekistan is one of the, what they call the Russian states. Mm. It's not a big country now, you know? And, 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 and then Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, all the stands, you know? But their, their, their programs. It takes time, guys. It takes time. It's, you know, like they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. But, you know, when, we, when I took on the, the national team and the Ascals, I think one of the, when, when I was interviewed before, one of the medium-term goals that we had was to be number one in Southeast Asia. Which and I think we were able to achieve that. And uh, hopefully we get into the top, well, actually we're in the top 20 of Asia as well. And hopefully we increase our rankings as we play more games. But uh, the more important thing is uh, with the tournaments, like the Challenge Cup, yeah. uh, we'll be able to make our mark, become champions, and be part of the elite team in, 
Asia, Asia. who will be competing in 2015 yeah. in Sydney. Yeah. And I think that would be a very big step, uh, a very big uh, step for Philippine football. It's, it's like Asian Cup is one one mm -hmm. rung away from the World Cup already. Yeah. It's like yeah. Last two questions. Okay. What's not? What's next for Philippine football? I mean, I think if that's addressed to Dan, I th I think it's the same questions for the PFF. Uh, uh, folks, let's I'll, I'll, let's put some perspective. Uh, an education thing. All right. The Philippine Football Federation are in charge of national and international football for the Philippines. Uh, Dan is just one of the managers, the which is he's handling is the Ascos, the, our national senior side. Uh, programs Dan can recommend, even the coaching staff can recommend, but the final decision will really, really be coming yes. from the Federation. Philippine Football Federation. That's how it goes. Uh, no one is bigger than the PFF, no one. Yeah. But everybody in the world are stakeholders in football. So everybody's got a two cents worth and it just depends on if the PFF will listen, if it's viable, uh, can it be done or not. So, but I think Philippine football, maybe if you let me you know first, you know, my, my perspective of it is, there's no other way but to go up. We haven't reached anything yet, actually. Philippine football hasn't really reached because our target is the Challenge Cup. Yeah. We make it the Challenge Cup, then we can say Philippine football has made its mark. We have made, yeah, we, with small steps. Our, ra our, our ranking in FIFA has gone tremendously uh, improved. But without winning a very big Asian thing, you know, that, then, then you're going to say, okay, see games is see games. I ah, see game, sorry. Southeast Asia is a smaller region than Asia. Remember, in Asia, there's a lot of bigger. Now, pa, that Australia, which I think is a stupid idea, like Australia is becoming Southeast Asia? Yeah, he's yeah. part of a. Uh, Come on, AFL. I mean, what's this? This is crazy. You know, I mean, I mean that's, that's crazy. Australia, why? <laughs> what's going to uh, play Two things like in Australia. All of us have to improve to, 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 match, them, them, to yeah. match them. Or. All of us just do learn the bottom and then let Australia every for how many decades will, will control this? Come on. I actually look at that as a challenge. I see, well, what have you got to lose? Okay, mm. bring them in and then yeah. let's let's see what we can do with them. Yeah. Because right now, I mean, three years ago when I took over, uh, nobody would have believed me if I said, okay, we'll be number one in, yeah. in Southeast Asia. Yeah nor we'll be in the top 20. We, we were 38th in mm -hmm. Asia before. 37. Yeah. Now we are in the 20th. Yeah. So I said, nobody would have believed that. And I think, I know it's, of course, Australia is, uh, has always qualified for the World Cup. Yeah. But uh, I think what we have to do now is to really step up and make sure. I mean, we can't undo their decision. Yeah. Yeah. It's already made and it's already done. Mm -hmm. So what we could do is uh, actually just uh, make sure that we improve as a... What is interesting with this Australia thing is, I wonder how Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, you know, Vietnam, think about it. You know, it's all we hear is here, us, here yeah, in the Philippines, yeah, yeah. how we react to that. It's really nice to know. I would like to know really what the reaction of the other but, Southeast Asian But the thing is, when they did their, uh, in the AFF, uh, ASEAN mm -hmm. Football Federation Council, Council, uh, they actually voted unanimously. They did? I think so. So there must have been some good points raised. Yeah, well. I don't know what it was, but uh, there must have been... Yeah, but, but there's only two things there anyway, like what you said. It's a challenge. Yeah, it, I think that's the main, maybe, you know, for... Because the other Asian countries have moved up yeah. in the world. Japan, Korea. I, you know. I, I think actually it is a, like a, a good move for the ASEAN region because like the Suzuki Cup is a huge deal for for Southeast Asia, but then it's just that you know like the the, the Southeast Asian teams don't really progress in the Asian tournaments anymore. Yeah. You got Thailand, Indonesia, yeah. who have great footballing history, but they just don't find that success. And maybe injecting a team where is really close to that World Cup status already yeah. and playing against that team on a regular basis now, then you're forced to. 
you know, get onto that level yeah. as well. So now you're playing in that World Cup status yeah. level. So I guess as it's so, uh, just, yeah, that's uh, that's why I hope that uh, we take advantage yeah. yes. of uh, this uh, development. Rather, otherwise, uh, we yeah. Go what, what, this, what, what was funny was during the under 16, I think Australia captain was a 15 or 14 year old girls. I'm talking about girls. Oh man, <laughs> size alone. But alone, just size alone, but the skill level and the, so different, so freaking different. And, you know, of course, all the teams like Philippines, uh, Myanmar, and who, I forgot the other teams that were, that were participating in Rizal, all they got to look up nice, you know, but they didn't really get clubbered that bad. You know, I mean, if it's a double digit loss, that's, that's a tremendous. Uh, 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 is a step back, but uh, I think they were fighting. They were they were playing pretty well. Even our own girls were yeah. were doing pretty well. And there's only one thing there. I think it's all the well because if if I I know how AFC FIFA think AFF is really to develop the sport globally, not just in Europe. He told them uh, regular powers, and then Asia would be just limited yeah. to Korea, Japan, and maybe China, yeah. North Korea. Then South Asia up to here, land. Yeah, I think that would be best. We're in. Remember, because the World Cup, they've opened how many more slots from the last World Cup? They sixteen more slots or something? Really? I, I think yeah. they were. Just, I heard there were there were plans to the, open up. I there might sure. be. You know, there might be more slots for Asia. Asia. That was what Africa. That yeah. is what uh, yeah. Blatter was saying in yeah. in the Asian. Uh, yes. Football uh, Cup Council. I thought they did that already for the last World Cup. Well, well but for I think this next World Cup, I think. I think we'll. I think we can because they want more expect. participation from Asia yes, and yeah, Africa. Yes, yes. I think uh, countries like Iran, mm -hmm. uh, Bahrain, or even yeah. other countries yeah. have, have actually. Been I imagine uh, Qatar is such a small country, but they 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 go really quite far. Yeah. yeah. Right for the World well, Cup. For, for on the same uh, breadth, you have uh, Holland. Yeah. In Europe, yes. In Europe, how many players are there? I mean, exactly. how many? What's the population? And then, yeah, they always go to yeah the, the World Cup semifinals. Yes. And I'm very proud of that. <laughs> Except for the last World Cup. The reason I'm very proud is because I'm, I'm half, half Dutch. Dutch. Yeah. My dad's Caucasian. My mom's doesn't look at all Asian. Uh, except for the last World Cup, I didn't like the way they played against Spain. They made a mockery of their moon. I mean, they played really freaking dirty. Anyway, we have one more question, last question for Dan. I hope it's for Dan Talaga. What are your thoughts? Aha, good one. I was going to say that. What are your thoughts on having an under-23 team with or without South Asian Games participation in the UFL to give them ample experience? Well, that's another story. No, I think, well, first, uh, it's unfortunate that we don't have uh, participation in the Southeast Asian mm -hmm. Games. Number one. Uh, we have the status as the number one team in Southeast Asia, yeah. Yeah, but we don't have the under-23 team participate in yeah. the Southeast Asian Games. Which is ridiculous. Yes. Uh, very ridiculous. They, 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 they said that the, you know, uh, the under-23 team didn't uh, pass the criteria, which was, <laughs> which was uh, joining under-23 tournaments. What they didn't realize is that the Southeast Asian Games is the only under-23 tournament that they... <laughs> AFF is undertaking, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then of course we have a. Uh, it, it would be. I mean, if to put the under twenty three team, even if you're not par participating in Southeast Asian Games, in the UFL as a guest team, for example, would not really be productive because by the time we finish the UFL, they 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 won't be joining uh, yeah. Southeast Asian Games anyway. Yeah. They will not be 23 anymore. Yes. So they will not be part of the under 23s also. Mm -hmm. Sayang. That's why we can take back. If there's one thing we can take back, that's time. Yeah. So these under 23 guys who have been playing with the senior national team and yeah. who have had the experience, yes. I think the criteria should have been that way. Who are these players? What's their experience? Yeah. They're, they're already playing for the Ascals. They're already playing for at a senior level. Yeah. We're just bringing them in, form a team. Here are our plans. We go to Japan. We go to uh, the Gulf region for training before Southeast Asian Games. Oh, no, but uh, yeah. you didn't participate in Merdeka Cup. 
Uh, that's an invitational, sir. So if you don't get invited, <laughs> yeah, you can <laughs> participate. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh my yeah, God. Well, no, and the yeah. thing that amateurism, Olympics, Olympism. Yeah. You're supposed to play. I mean, to give an excuse that you're going to lose and all, or you don't send teams because they have, they're not gold... Uh, candidates. Candidates. Gold medal candidates. That's plain idiotic. Absolutely. That's not the essence of sports. Not at sports, all. Sports, you play. How will you know where you, how far you can go if you don't even try? Well, and also, isn't it their mandate to improve yes. and make sure yes. that they... Yes, part yes, yes, exactly. So, we don't help you. You don't get to participate because we didn't train you well. Okay. <laughs> and then, uh, that's, why, that's why I raised that question to them. I mean, how on earth is football or any other sport helped by not giving them the opportunity to play in Southeast Asian games? I would have understood if the resources were limited and therefore yeah. football uh, had to take a back seat yeah. because uh, they didn't have enough resources to bring them there. Yeah. But football was going there with their own, uh, at their own expense, with their own resources. Yeah. So they're not taking away yeah. slots from, from, what any other athlete. who, from other athletes yeah. which they perceived had better chances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so how, how, could, how could that... Uh, help football kung hindi pa Could there be anything f behind that or anyone behind that that didn't send our under 23? Is there a possibility that there's somebody else or a group? Mm. I mean, yeah, I like a mafia? Uh, you know, I mean, no, because it's plain and simple stupid. All sports loving people can say the same thing. You will never know how good you are or how far you can reach if you don't compete. Yeah. I mean, you only have to look as far as 2010. Yeah, so imagine, up, right? imagine if we didn't compete in 2010. Mm. Because anyway, if the policy then was, well, you don't even get past the, if we base your performance on the previous mm. uh, Suzuki Cup qualifiers, mm. you never went past the qualifying rounds mm. to compete mm. in the mm. main draw. So let's not join. No, you know what I think then? I think it has nothing to do with, actually with, it's just a, Plus for them to say about the the game that we had in Singapore, they don't even count the All Stars, yeah. UFL All Stars versus the under 23s. I think they still had it in their backs of their heads of the last performance we had, the last year games, yeah. which the team was not really prepared. well prepared as our team right now. Yes. They don't see that, so I don't think any. Any kind of explanation from you, from no, no, no or from no, whatever, no. will you know? They're closed. Yeah, their mind is closed, and they're like you said, they're mandated to help and uh, help develop the sports here in the Philippines, not just football. I mean, all other yeah. sports. I mean, or is it because uh, there are other slots for the junkets? Because I think Philippines has been known to have more officials than <laughs> athletes. I wouldn't be surprised. Then. Well, so we gotta, we're gonna have to wrap this up. Yeah, we got about five minutes left. I just wanted to ask you, like that question about Philippine, like what's the future of Philippine football? Obviously, it's more of a PFF thing, but just in your mind, like what do you imagine? We have a domestic league now that's, that's, that's doing pretty decent. We have, you know, we're number one in Southeast Asia. Is the World Cup on the horizon? Is that something that, you know, that you're looking at? We will certainly aspire for it, at yeah. least to go to the third or fourth round of uh, the World Cup where you're almost competing for a slot in the right. final uh, groups. But uh, the real, the real uh, and the key thing would be our participation in the Asian Cup via the Challenge Cup. Right. I think that will create the, the biggest of waves for Philippine football. And I think if all the clubs, if all the stakeholders are one with us in, in, in that dream, then uh, we, we, we will get there. I think. We have shown, we have, we, have, we have seen that it's not enough that we bring in Shrock, we bring in Jerry. We, we lost to Chinese Taipei. We were supposed to collaborate that team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we were overconfident. We, were, we didn't have enough time together. I think uh, now we've, it's a good thing that we learned that lesson quite early in our preparations. So now that we know, uh, I think we will be looking at having more of, of the team together for longer periods of time. Of course, this will affect uh, their schedules with their clubs and uh, with their schools. But we hope that somehow with 
the Asian Cup dream in mind, everybody will cooperate and everybody will agree that it's something that we have to do. So I hope that uh, this sacrifice that they will make for the national team via, I mean, the clubs mm -hmm. will will actually support it. As you're speaking, Dan, you're, do you think really that we're going to do well in the Challenge Cup? Yeah, I, I mean, so. personally. Well, you know, the runners-up in, in, in the last, last uh, Challenge. Challenge Cup was Tajik's, uh, Turkmenistan. Which we and we beat them already. Yes. And the only thing that kept them from going was North Korea. North Korea isn't joining anymore. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are other teams. The other teams are not sleeping. They are actually improving yes. as well. Yes. So it would be very uh, dangerous for us to sit on our number one Southeast Asian game uh, title and then just do what we can do at the pace that we want. No, actually we have to do more because they're not taking us lightly anymore. Yeah. Last question. Because the other countries, like my own country, are doing so many naturalized players. We don't have any naturalized players. No, we, don't. we have all field foreigners, Filipino blood. Yeah. Do we have any plans of, of giving anyone? Well, uh, it's, uh, I'm sorely tempted to do it. However, I think we need to first, uh, I mean, there are a lot of Filipinos playing outside the yes. country. So I think we need to exhaust uh, okay. our efforts to find really good Filipino players and then uh, see what, where we can go with them. Uh, naturalization, well, you know, if you look at, uh, unfortunately for football, in, in basketball it was like natural. Mm -hmm. When uh, they're going to the World Cup, okay, we need two seven-foot players. <laughs> And I was really, like, how come they could do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. If I say that, then I'd get the flag. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, hey yeah, yeah, yeah. why are we going for naturalization? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, I'd want to, but I think our first step would be to look at Filipinos all over the world and see, uh, because there's nothing like... Uh, the, yeah. your, own blood. Your own blood playing for you. Hypothetically, Izu. Because uh, I knew it before. When I was coaching Izu, when he was still a youth, now he's the youth with you. <laughs> I know for a fact that Buds and he, he plans of, you know, becoming a naturalized. Uh, because if if I don't know if you know, but Izu, which we don't know also if he was a first eleven player or, or a second stringer, was in the Saudi Arabian youth under seventeen. No, he. I mean, you could see he's a very good oh. player, oh, yeah. and uh, if you ask him. He'd certainly want to play for the, the Philippines. In yeah, fact, yeah. when we were starting in 2010, he used to practice with us, yeah, and yeah. hopefully. So, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, well, no, as I said, the first but option is yeah, to, yeah, look at, to look at the... We, are the, the, we want the glamour to come from the fans. If the fans say, hey, if Izo becomes a Filipino, let him play. But first he has to become Filipino. Yeah, yeah. We're the, we're the next one after the Chinese. We're all over. <laughs> We're all over. <laughs> Unfortunately, an hour and a half is not enough talking to Dan Palami. Uh, hopefully, you, you, you'll come that back. That's an hour and a half, right? Yeah, it's so quick, you know, <laughs> when these things happen. So, we're hoping to have you back on, well, on the show. Well, well, yeah. Some a lot of things soon. going to happen in the next yeah. few months. So. We wish you the best Good of luck. luck. Thank you. For everything. Thank of you course, very much. Um, the next one, um, you're taking Global to the Singapore Cup for the third place That's match. True. And then you guys uh, fly off and play UAE. And then India, India uh, afterwards. Are these, are these games going to be broadcast on India? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Oh, great. ABS. And then, uh, yeah. And then uh, from India, we fly back. Hopefully, I've asked PFF to schedule another game in the Philippines, maybe against Afghanistan or another country, okay. because we need we need the team together. And, right. Uh, uh, All right. So uh, yeah, time for us to wrap this up. We'd like to thank, of course, Beyond the Box for uh, allowing us to, to do this show. It's such a pleasure to be able to sit down and talk with a man like Dan Palami, who I've, I've been it's around you. You know, I've been around you in the UFL and all of that, but you know, there's really no time for us to be yes, able sir. to talk like this. And it's just such a pleasure to be able to do that. We'd also like to thank Saris LaSalle Football Club for sponsoring the show. You guys are incredible. And uh, congratulations on the latest win in the UFL Cup. You guys have been doing pretty Very good. Very strong team. Yeah. Uh, how, are you, are you, how are you feeling about the competition in the 
UFL Cup, by the way. Oh, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, Round Loyola has been routing its opponents, <laughs> and then you know yeah, they've always yeah, been a strong yeah. team. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Round of well, sixteen, of course, is well, just around the corner. With, uh, for, uh, Service Lasalle, uh, thank you for to Leo Ray, Leo Ray Hanson, and congratulations for winning the uh, university games in yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, three days Leo ago. Ray. But it would have been the finals was in the semifinals anyway. Ah, that's <laughs> so scraping <laughs> for the officials of the university games. Please get your act together, or I'll take over. <laughs> Final shot. It's been a pleasure having thank a you, chance thank to you talk for having to you. Me here. Thank you. Thank so you. much yeah. enjoyment in terms of football was, uh, you know, a result of you get, taking the Ascals and doing something that nobody else thought was possible. And you know, so much joy in that on that day itself, and Vietnam, and the succeeding years of success that we've had is such an honor to be able to sit down and, and do this you. with you. Thank so you hopefully we'll much. see you again, and we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you to everybody who have subscribed. If you haven't yet, please do that. Get the podcast app on your iPhone and hit subscribe on Hands On so you guys can get these when they come in. We're gonna try to do it uh, on a weekly basis now. So uh, hopefully you guys continue to do that. All the support that you guys show us, so much. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. 28,000, that's incredible. Hopefully we'll get 28, more. 28,000. Plus, plus, plus. Some, some, some. So hopefully we'll get uh, you know somewhere in that region or even more in this second episode. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys.